working though uh, that I have up uh, with the frosted line. Just give me a thumbs up, Trinity. Yeah. Think. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right. So um, this is uh, something my technician ran into yesterday. Uh, it's a Whirlpool refrigerator. <clears throat> the suction line was frozen. And he called somebody. And the guy says, oh, put an access valve on there and check the pressures. And uh, one thing I'd like to say is when you have a sealed system problem, yeah. You have to take care of it, but um, the last thing I want to do is access a sealed system until I'm confident the problem is a sealed system problem. Just because it, it looks like something doesn't necessarily mean it is what it is. Now, one thing is, is there's a couple things in this picture that, you know, you could tell a lot of information just by looking at this picture. Uh, what do you guys see inside this picture? You know, not just the ice, but what can you tell me about this system? Anything important? Anything, guys? Don't have a clue. Okay. Well, if you look up in this area right here, do you know what this is? That is that is a two-way valve or a, a step valve, depending on the manufacturer. And that indicates that there's actually two evaporators on this refrigerator. Okay. Um, it comes off of the dryer filter and it has one line coming in and it has two capillary tubes coming out. The other thing that you can notice if you look here is that this is the evaporator suction line going back to the compressor and you can see it frosted up. But if you look closely, there's another line over here. There's two suction lines joining to one right there. And that's because again, we have dual evaporator. So by looking at the picture, you know, you got to be able to identify these things when you look at it. And these are the things that you're looking for. Now, if you notice, there is frost on this line, but this line here has a little bit of frost, but there's no frost at the bottom there. Um, so what, what is an indication of frost on a suction line? What, what does that mean is wrong with the system? Anybody know? Refrigerant. <laughs> yeah, uh, too much, too little. Um, what do you think? Too much is uh, either overcharged or we got an evaporator fan not working. Very good. And overcharge would cause a, a frost back to the compressor. That means the refrigerant's not evaporating. I, I, I tell people when you look at the line, when you see frost, that's Freon that's turning from a liquid to a vapor. But in a refrigerant system, that's supposed to happen in the evaporator. By the time it comes to the suction line, it should have been 100% vapor. And when it's 100% vapor, it does not produce frost. <clears throat> so an, an indication would be, hey, uh, we have, you know, an overcharged system here. But if you look at the compressor, does that look like factory braze joints to you? Or is that like someone did a compressor job? That's pretty much factory. There doesn't look like anybody has done any work on this compressor whatsoever. I did not see, he didn't take a big enough picture to show me if there was an access valve already on the system, but I found out later there was no access valve on the system. So, Yes, an indication of overcharge, but if there's no valve and <coughs> excuse me, and the compressor is factory, how did it get overcharged? This is not a brand new unit. If you look in the base of this unit, this unit's been here for a little while. So it's not like it just overcharged by itself. 
So again, this is all the information I originally got from a technician and he just sent me the picture and it took like five or 10 minutes to get a hold of him on the phone to find out what's going on. And he said, yeah, I was talking to someone else and they told me to put a piercing valve on it and check the pressures. I said, now wait a minute. There are other things that could cause this frost back. And like you said, Larry, it, it could be the evaporator fan wasn't working. So he sent me another picture. What does that look like? Anybody, anybody know? That looks like, uh, Richard, maybe a defrost issue or the door was uh, left open. Yeah, um, it looks a lot like a defrost problem there, like as if the uh, evaporator was not defrosting. And if it wouldn't defrost, even if the fan was running here, we wouldn't pull no heat across the coil and that would cause this frost back that we're seeing in this picture here. So now we're looking at a defrost problem, not a sealed system problem. So I told the technician, okay, this is a dual evap system. I said, what's the freezer like? Because this is the refrigerator compartment. And he says, oh, the refrigerator's, I'm sorry, the refrigerator's cold, but the freezer is room temperature. So now you're like, wait a minute, how could we have all this frost here? and we're not getting cooling in the freezer section. Well, if this is frosted up like this, it's not gonna cool the refrigerator properly. So the thermistor inside this box is going to be telling the control board, hey, we're not that cold. You know, we need to uh, cool this refrigerator compartment down before we go to the freezer. So it's stuck in this freeze refrigerator mode and never turned on the evaporator in the freezer. So we got stuck here. So the next thing we do is we need to go into diagnostics. So I, I downloaded the manual, and if any of you guys want, just reach out to me and I'll email it to you if you want the manual. Um, so I downloaded the manual. The first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to go into diagnostics. I wanted to, to have the guy test and see what was working because he said the fr freezer was room temperature, that the customer had no food in the freezer and it wasn't cold. So you're like, man, is, is the two-way valve working? Maybe it's stuck in, in refrigerator compartment? You know, why isn't the freezer cooling? So we went into diagnostics. <clears throat> and here's how, you go into, here's how you go into diagnostics is there's six buttons in the control panel, and they call it S switch one, two, three, four, five, six. And I have um, some examples of the different refrigerators. So switch one would be this one here, two would be this one, three, four, five, six. This is saying one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So <clears throat> when you're um, when you're looking at this unit to go into diagnostics right here they tell you press switch one and two for three seconds so that would be these two buttons right here or these two depending on which display you have and that's how you would enter into diagnostics now one of the things we need to read is is right here you need to look at this pressing switch number five moves to the next step Press switch number four and it goes back to the previous step. So pressing these two buttons, four and five, um, they, uh, four and five, they, they advance you to the next step and the next test. So let's look and look at the tests that are available for this unit. Right here. So the two that I was concerned with was this one and this one, but I also want to know if the thermistors checked good or not. Step number three was the evaporator fan motor and air baffle. Now, if you read it, it says control the RC and FC evaporator. RC stands for refrigerator compartment. 
FC stands for freezer compartment. So they want you to, to, to go into this step and by depressing number S, the third button, you can turn both fans on and off. Or if you press it again and it says zero two in the display, just the freezer compartment fan is on. So again, the freezer is not cooling and we have frost back on the refrigerator. So we have two different problems. But the first thing I want to know is if my freezer compartment was cooling. So you press three once, it'll flash quickly in advance. Steps 13 and 23 quickly. The result is the RC fan pantry damper on. So this here is to con check the damper control that controls the airflow through the box and make sure that the fans are working in the compartment. The next test would be the compressor, condenser fan, and evaporator fan. So here, if we look, that not only does the fans, but right here, step number one, initializes a dual evap valve in the home position. And if we look at step four and five, that we could compressor on, we move the valve to the refrigerator compartment, we move the valve to the freezer compartment in step five. So that step is gonna be the one that I'm gonna to use to test whether or not the, the freezer compartment was cooling. So I got a video here just to show you real quick what I mean about going into diagnostics here. KSF 26 C6 XYY 00 side by side is used in this video. This refrigerator has a dual evaporator and has some additional diagnostic steps not found on a single evaporator model. Always use the service sheet included with the refrigerator you are servicing to guide you through the troubleshooting diagnostics. So this is just this video will reference the buttons. buttons using the names on this chart. The buttons are labeled from left to right. Important: Unit must not be in lockdown prior to entering the service diagnostic mode. To enter service diagnostics mode, press SW1 and SW2 simultaneously for three seconds. Release both buttons when you hear the chime indicator. The display will show 01 to indicate that the controls in step one of the diagnostics routine. To exit the service diagnostics mode at any time, do one of the following three options. Press SW1 and SW2 simultaneously for three seconds. Disconnect the product from power. Allow 20 minutes to pass. Following the end of the diagnostic mode, the controls will then resume normal operation. Each step must be manually advanced. Press SW5 to move to the next step in the sequence. I'm trying to figure out how to advance the video, but it's not giving me the advanced uh, feature. Press SW4 to back up in the sequence to the previous step. Each step is displayed in two digits of the dispenser using interface display. Important on the additional steps. Okay. Step one, an air baffle motor. Verify airflow from the evaporator fan. Check to see if the baffle opens and closes. Zero one indicates that the evaporator fans are turned off. Zero two indicates that the FC evaporator fan is turned on. 03 indicates that the RC evaporator fan is turned on. 04 indicates both evaporator fans are turned on. For dual evaporator models only, step four tests the rotary refrigerant valve and compressor. Steps are timed and will automatically advance to the next step. Note, you cannot advance manually through these steps. Step one, the rotary valve moves to the home position. This step lasts four minutes and cannot be advanced. Okay, so what he's talking about right there, and I'm gonna go back to right here. See, step number one initializes the evaporator valve in a home position. So you have to actually be patient and wait six minutes, which is four minutes for step one, one minute for step one, uh, step two, and one minute for step three before you can actually check that, that the valve is actually sending free on to the refrigerator compartment and then the valve goes to the freezer compartment. My technician was being a little impatient. He's like, man, it's, it's not doing anything, you know? Uh, I said, you have to wait actually six minutes before you can go to those other steps. 
You cannot advance that on your own. So he's talking right now about this part. This is the part here that I wanted to, to uh, talk about. A model KSF 26, zero one or test the rotary refrigerant valve and compressor. Steps are timed and will automatically advance to the next step. Note, you cannot advance manually through these steps. Step one, the rotary valve moves to the home position. This step lasts four minutes and cannot be advanced. Step two, the rotary valve passageways to both the refrigerator and freezer evaporators are closed. This step lasts one minute. Step three, the compressor is turned on. This step lasts one position before exiting the service diagnostic. Yeah, it went a little bit too far there. Oh, and the but. rotary valve opens the passageway to feed refrigerant to the refrigerator evaporator and the RC fan is tururned on. Okay, so in step four, Freon is running to the evaporator inside the refrigerator compartment and the fans running. That's the ones that we want to test. Now my technician was able to press one of the buttons to advance to the next test here, even though they said that it doesn't. This step lasts two minutes. Step five. The compressor keeps running and the rotary valve opens the passageway to feed refrigerant to the freezer evaporator and the FC fan is turned on. This step lasts two minutes. Okay, so he went to step four. He heard the fan running and we know that there was Freon going to the refrigerator evaporator because it was frozen. He went to step five and he noticed the fan motor wasn't working in the freezer. So I don't know what the relation of the fan motor not working in the freezer would be to the refrigerator evaporator freezing up, but the freezer wasn't cooling. I told him to go down and check it. Now I'm going to show you guys another picture. Can you guys see this picture? Yeah. Uh, what, what, yeah. What, what happened there? It's unplugged. <laughs> yeah, so so this is what happened. The, the this is the freezer evaporator, and a technician went through that one diagnostic test and saw that the fan motor wasn't working, and apparently someone went in prior to him and disconnected the uh, quick disconnect in the freezer. So going back to it, why was the refrigerator compartment frosted up? You know, that that was, we had two different problems here. We had a refrigerator compartment frosted and we had a no cool in the freezer. Well, by having this disconnected, we're disconnecting not only fan motors and defrost components in the freezer, but we're all dis, also disconnecting thermistors and controls. I think these two wires right here, these white wires, right? Uh, let me get the marker here. These white wires right here are your thermistor wires and the board can't see them. So it has no clue what's going on. So if we go back to this unit and we had all this frost and we had this ice here, once this thing frosted up, it couldn't see what was going on. Now, he didn't tell me whether or not this is one thing that I needed to, to know from him was step one and step two in this unit. Step one and step two are the thermistors. And step one was the FC thermistor. With that plug unplugged, what do you think I would get as, an, as a code? I should get an O2. In, in, in that quick disconnect, he should have had an O2 reading. If you guys can't see it, I can make it bigger. Give me a second here. Okay, he should have had an O2 reading on the freezer compartment thermistor because that quick disconnect wasn't connected. So, I don't know why the refrigerator didn't show him that or he just didn't
tell me because I was talking to him over the phone and I said, do this test, do that test. But the whole purpose of this class that I wanted to give, and I realize it's not an hour long class, but he was told to put an access valve on there. When the access valve wasn't the problem. The access valve was, you know, just going to create more problems. We didn't have a sealed system problem. We had a, a cooling issue in the freezer, and we had a cooling issue in the refrigerator. But when the things are disconnected, the control board doesn't know what to do. And so it never went to the freezer compartment. There was no frost on the evaporator in the freezer whatsoever. The fan never ran. So the valve stuck in one position. And I don't know what caused it, so basically he reconnected the quick disconnect and he had to defrost the evaporator and the refrigerator so the refrigerator will cool again. But, you know, don't always go into a system and say, oh, look at that frost, I'm going to go ahead and access the, the sealed system. That was the most important part of this class that I wanted to teach was that you need to check everything. You need to check defrost. You need to check fans. You need to check gaskets. You need to check the whole working components of all everything that you can. And once you've ruled out whether they're working or not working, then you would go into the sealed system to troubleshoot the sealed system. Um, going into diagnostics, that immediately told us we had a problem in the freezer. Now, I don't know if we had a problem in a, in a refrigerator compartment causing the frost buildup, but until he fixed the freezer from working in, and it working properly, after he connected that quick disconnect, he went back into test four and he went ahead and he energized the, uh, the, uh, the valve into, into position five where the freezer compartment had Freon and the fan was working. So now it started cooling. So we know that the step valve is good. We know the fan motors were good. The only thing now is he had to let it run for a while before both compartments cooled down. Does anybody have any questions about this? No questions, Richard, but I'd like a copy of that uh, manual. Okay, if you could just send me an email um, through TMM, I'll be more than happy. Yeah. I'll be more than happy to email you that manual. Okay. Okay. Thank you. But uh, I know it was a short lesson today. It was only half an hour. But Brandon and I have a couple things planned for this week and next week that we're going to put up a few more videos to make up for the holiday weekend. But if you guys don't have any other questions, I appreciate you coming in, and. Uh, uh, we'll see you soon. I I'm going to do some more classes uh, in the next two weeks.